So today in lab we study genetics, which is study of the inheritance of traits from your ancestors. And I'm not going to go into very much detail about the background of um, Punnett squares or blood typing or things like that. I have other videos and other background information about that. We're mainly focusing on the actual experiments we did today. First thing we looked at in class was some simple traits that show simple dominance and recessiveness. And we looked at the frequency of those traits of members of our classroom. And they were the taster trait. So we've got PTC paper or paper impregnated with phenothiocarbamide. And the ability to taste PTC is the dominant trait. So if you can taste it, you have at least one copy of the dominant allele. If you can't taste it, you must have two copies of the recessive allele. So just have them taste the, trait, taste the paper. And as you can see on the taster, it tastes pretty bad, but a non-taster would not be able to taste anything. I'm a taster. I could be either big T, big T, or big T, little T. I'm not sure because it is a recessive trait. Excuse me. It, it's a dominant trait, so the only people who know what allele they really are uh, right, off the hand, right off the bat are people who are non-tasters. A non-taster would, of course, be homozygous, recessive, little T, little T. Our next trait was widow's peak. Uh, I don't have a widow's peak, so I have the recessive trait. Widow's peak is the dominant trait. That's when the hair in the middle of your forehead comes to a point. So widow's peak is dominant. Lack of widow's peak, like I have, is recessive. The third trait was the shape of your earlobe. That is whether your earlobe hangs free or is attached to the side of your head. Uh, my earlobe is free earlobe, so it's not attached to the side of my skull. And free earlobes are dominant, so I've got the dominant trait. And attached earlobes are recessive. So because I have the dominant trait, I don't know if I'm heterozygous or homozygous dominant. The final trait we looked at was whether your fingers interlock with your thumb on top, or your right thumb on top, your left thumb on top. So when I interlock my fingers, you can see I've got my left thumb on top. And having your left thumb on top is a recessive trait. Having your right thumb on top is a dominant trait. And because my, my left thumb is normally on top, whenever I have my right thumb on top, it feels very odd. It doesn't, come, it doesn't go that way naturally. So I want you to be able to do Punnett squares with simple traits like this, that simple dominance and recessiveness, and be able to tell me the genotypic ratio and the phenotypic ratio of all of these crosses. For example, phenotypic ratios, of course, the physical traits someone has, like whether they're a taster or not a taster, or whether they have attached earlobes or not attached earlobes. And your genotypic ratios are the ratios of your actual alleles, that is, this combination of letters, like big T, big T for, for a taster, or little t, little t for the non taster. So make sure you can do simple Punnett squares with one characteristic and interpret genotypic. The next thing we talked about was morbidity of the genes. Morbidity genes are genes that contribute to some kind of disorder. And an example of our morbidity gene was the cystic fibrosis gene. And they ask us to imagine a cross between two parents. Both parents are heterozygous for cystic fibrosis. Now cystic fibrosis is recessive. So the only way a person can have cystic fibrosis is if that person has two copies of that recessive allele. If they inherited one from their mom and also one from their dad. So if we had a cross between two people who are heterozygous, we consider that a cross between two carriers. Someone who is heterozygous for a recessive disease is a carrier. They're healthy, but it's possible their children may have the disease, depending on who they have children with. So our cross looks something like this. We had a dad, we had a mom, so it's a cross between two heterozygous, and we found that one-fourth of their children, 25%, would have cystic fibrosis. 75% of them would be healthy. 50% of them, however, would be carriers for the disease. 25% of them would be both healthy and also not a carrier. Remember, a carrier is healthy but has one of the recessive alleles for a particular disease. So their children might have the disease, even though they do not. Okay, the next thing we looked at was human chromosome chart. And this is a 
chart of human chromosomes, you won't really be able to see this, but we just picked out what chromosomes some of the, some of the traits were on. We found, for example, that red hair colors on chromosome number four, and we also found that color blindness is on the X chromosome. So the X and Y chromosomes are sex chromosomes. Remember, women have two X chromosomes. A man will have one X chromosome and also one Y chromosome. So the sex chromosomes will determine what sex you are. Okay. And next we went and looked at a few genetic disorders. So we've got some posters over here to look at. These are normal human chromosomes, a normal human set of chromosomes. Uh, this is a woman. She'll have two X chromosomes and, tw and 22 other pairs. A normal man will have 22 pairs of chromosomes, one X and one Y. So humans have 46 chromosomes total. So that's that at one X and one Y that make a man a normal man, and those two X's that make a normal woman a normal one. But it's not uncommon for things to go wrong in meiosis, and for the wrong chromosomes to go in the wrong eggs, the wrong sperm, or too many chromosomes or not enough. It actually happens fairly frequently, and when things like that happen, or just mutations happen, you can have chromosomal abnormalities. Got names of a few of them I want you to know. Okay. Down syndrome is a fairly famous genetic abnormality. A person with Down syndrome will just have 20, um, three chromosome number 21s. And for all these disorders, you don't have to know very much about them other than their names. I don't have to know a lot of details about them. Kleinfelter okay. syndrome. A man with Kleinfelter has two X chromosomes instead of just one as well as his normal Y. So he's got an extra X chromosome. Kleinfelder's men are taller than normal, but they cannot have chil children. Turner's syndrome is in females. A woman with Turner's will have only one X chromosome instead of the normal two. So Turner's women also do not have any children. Okay, the final genetic mutation we talked about was sickle cell anemia. It's a pretty classic genetic problem. It's a mutation of chromosome number 21, and we've got an example of blood that's afflicted with sickle cell anemia on a video monitor. Let me glance that. Okay, so we've got a slide of a blood with a person with sickle cell anemia. And some of these blood cells you can see, they're very oddly shaped. So sickle cell anemia causes deformed um, shapes of blood. And like all these genetic conditions we talked about, sometimes in some people's symptoms are very severe, sometimes they're very mild. It just varies on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, because for many genetic conditions, it's not only your genes that influence what you have, it's also your environment. So your, phenot your actual phenotype can be determined by not only your genes, but your environment in many cases, or at least influenced. The next thing we talked about was sex influence traits. Our example was pattern baldness. Pattern baldness is frequently called male pattern baldness because men will have it more often than women. So a sex influence trait is one that's more common in one sex than another. So pattern baldness, here's an example of pattern baldness. We've got a receding hairline. And pattern baldness is interesting because it is possible for women to have pattern baldness. It's just less likely. So what's going on in pattern baldness is that there are the influences of hormones as well as just genes. So a man who is heterozygous for pattern baldness is going to be, have pattern baldness. The only way a man can not have pattern baldness is if he has two copies of the non-bald allele. It's different in women. The only way a woman can have pattern baldness is if she has two copies of the baldness allele. So a woman who's heterozygous or a woman who's homozygous non-bald will not, not be bald. So in this particular instance, it's the heterozygous condition that's influenced by testosterone. Because men have more testosterone, um, all the men who are heterozygous for the condition are going to have pattern baldness, while women who are heterozygous for it will not have a receding hair. Next thing we talked about was multiple alleles. Multiple alleles are when there's Lots of different alleles involved in a particular, um, or rather, more than two alleles involved in a particular trait. 
our example was human blood types. And I have talked a lot about human blood types in another video. I suggest you look at it if you're not sure about it, because I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail about how to interpret these results. So talk about it briefly. So we have three different alleles when we talk about human blood types. You have A alleles, you have B alleles, and also you have RH alleles. So A and B are codominant to each other. So if you have only A, you have A type blood. If you have only B, you have B type blood. But if you have both A and B, your blood type is AB. It's not either A or B, it's both. Because both A and B are equally strong and both are fully expressed. And O is recessive to A and B. So O type blood is like of any A alleles or any B alleles. And O is, of course, recessive to both A and B. Now, RH is also something that exhibits simple dominance or recessiveness. If you're RH positive, it's dominant RH negative. And if you're RH positive, you'll have a plus tectone to the end of your blood type. RH negative, you'll have a negative tectone to the end of your blood type. And let's take just a brief look about what we did about actually typing blood, or rather blood substitutes in class. I'll look over here.